Franz Mattenklot was born on November 19, 1884, in Grunberg, a city located in the Prussian province of Silesia. His parents were Dietrich Mattenklot and Elfriede ne Duttenhofer. His father, Dietrich, held multiple roles, including director of a sugar factory in Oberpritchen in Silesia, estate owner, and a retired captain of the Prussian army. Upon completing his high school education, Franz Mattenklot sought to join an infantry regiment in Metz, Alsace-Lorraine, which was then part of the German Empire. After passing a rigorous written examination, he began his service in the Prussian army as an officer candidate on December 28, 1903. He officially attained the rank of officer in 1905. By 1912, he had risen to the position of adjutant of the regiment's 1st Battalion. During World War I, Mattenklot served as a captain. Following the capitulation of the German Empire, Mattenklot remained in service in the Reichswehr of the Weimar Republic. He steadily climbed the ranks of the Reichswehr, achieving the rank of major in 1928. His subsequent role was as an instructor at the infantry school in Dresden. By 1932, he had reached the rank of Oberstleutnant. The ascent of Adolf Hitler to power in 1933 signified the downfall of the Weimar Republic. In the ensuing years, disregarding the constraints of the Versailles Treaty, the Nazi regime intensified German rearmament efforts and expanded the military's size. As part of this rearmament process, Mattenklot assumed command of the newly established infantry regiment Stargard on October 1, 1934, simultaneously being promoted to the rank of Oberst, Colonel. Mattenklot's elevation to the ranks of general officers occurred at the age of 53 when he was promoted to General Major, Major General, on March 1, 1938. He assumed a new command position in the western part of the Third Reich, appointed as the commander of the Border Command Trier, Grenz, Kommandanter Trier, on July 1, 1938. He retained this position during Nazi Germany's invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939, which marked the onset of World War II in Europe. As the outbreak of war occurred, the bulk of the German army was engaged in Poland. However, with the Western Allies entering the conflict against Nazi Germany, the Western borders became vulnerable. Franz Mattenklot was tasked with the crucial duty of guarding these borders. He commanded three regiments, two infantry and one artillery, responsible for defending the border with Luxembourg and the adjacent area with France. On September 19, 1939, the units under his command were reorganized into the 72nd Infantry Division, headquartered at Koblenz. Given its secondary priority, the division comprised units of relatively inferior combat capabilities. Throughout the subsequent months, it remained stationed on the Western Front during the Phony War, facing minimal engagement from the Western Allies. In February 1940, shortly before the German offensive in France, Mattenklot was promoted to General Lieutenant, Lieutenant General. During the Battle of France in May June 1940, Mattenklot's units played a limited role. An account from one of the division's veterans suggested that Mattenklot's decision to forbid air support during an attack on French positions led to operational failure and criticism of his leadership. Despite facing only light resistance, the division's performance was deemed mediocre. Following France's capitulation in June 1940, the 72nd Infantry Division was stationed in France as an occupational force, and Mattenklot was appointed commander of Metz, Alsace-Lorraine, in July of the same year. Following a brief period of refitting in France, the 72nd Infantry Division was deployed to Bulgaria in the spring of 1941 to participate in the planned invasion of Greece, known as Operation Merida. Under the 18 Mountain Corps, commanded by General der Infanterie Franz Bohm, the division faced stiff resistance from Greek forces and the heavily fortified Metaxas Line. Despite initial setbacks, Mattenklot's division eventually achieved breakthroughs, leading to the capitulation of Greek forts and the occupation of the country. At the onset of Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, Mattenklot's division found itself stationed in Romania. It was assigned to the 11th Army of Army Group South as a reserve unit. Initially, it saw action near Nikolaev in Ukraine before crossing the Dnieper River, a strategic move facilitating the advance toward Crimea. Mattenklot led his troops throughout the Crimean campaign, culminating in the arrival at Sevastopol in late autumn. On October 1, 1941, Mattenklot was promoted to the rank of General of the Infantry. For his leadership during the Siege of Sevastopol in November 1941, he was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. During this time in Crimea, Mattenklot was faced with the atrocities committed by Einsatzgruppen, including the mass execution of Jews, for which he expressed gratitude to the responsible unit. 
Under the command of General der Infanterie Erich von Manstein, the 11th Army continued its siege of Sevastopol. In late December 1941, a crisis arose when the Soviets launched an amphibious attack on the Kerch Straits and Feodosia, threatening to isolate General Lieutenant Hans von Sponek's 62 Army Corps. Mattenklot replaced Sponek, leading his units in fierce battles across eastern Crimea. In May 1942, Mattenklot orchestrated Operation Trappenjagd, aimed at eliminating Soviet bridgeheads in the Kerch Peninsula. The operation resulted in the encirclement and destruction of numerous Red Army units. Following the capture of Crimea in July 1942, Mattenklot was appointed commander of Crimea. Concerned about the civilian population's welfare amidst harsh German policies, Mattenklot advocated for more humane treatment but was unsuccessful in effecting change. Under his command, Crimea suffered food shortages and widespread executions of civilians deemed undesirable by Nazi standards. Mattenklot commanded 62 Corps during the Battle of Kursk in July 1943, but his role was peripheral. In January 1944, he temporarily relinquished command during the Battle of the Corson, Cherkasa Pocket, where his absence contributed to the Germans' eventual breakout. In the subsequent months, Mattenklot's military significance dwindled, though he played a role in aiding German units in the battles in Koval, where he assisted in breaking the Soviet encirclement. In early June 1944, General der Infanterie Gerhard Glock, commander of Military District 6, Werkreis 6 in Munster, Westphalia, passed away due to a heart attack. Mattenklot was chosen to succeed him, effective from June 15, 1944. This transfer proved fortuitous, as a week later, on June 22, 1944, the Soviet Union launched Operation Begration, a massive offensive that dealt a severe blow to the Wehrmacht and paved the way for the Soviet advance into Germany. Unaware of any anti-Nazi sentiments among his officers, Mattenklot found himself inadvertently entangled in the events surrounding the July 20 plot to assassinate Hitler. When Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg bombed Hitler's headquarters, Oberstleutnant Martin Bartels, a conspirator on Mattenklot's staff, urged him to leave headquarters. However, the plot failed to gain traction in Munster. Despite receiving orders for the arrest of Nazi officials in the district, Mattenklot remained passive until news of the failed coup reached him. The impact of the failed plot and subsequent reprisals on Mattenklot's loyalty to Hitler's regime remains unclear. As the Western Allies advanced into Germany in spring 1945, Mattenklot followed unrealistic orders, leading the defense of Paderborn in North Rhine-Westphalia. On April 1, 1945, he reported to his superior, Generalfeldmarschall Albert Kesselring, that Paderborn had fallen after valiant defense. He committed to holding the Tudelberg Forest but expressed the inability to deploy significant forces. Allegedly, a few days later, Mattenklot ordered the execution of Wilhelm Grafer, the mayor of Lemgo, for treason as he attempted to surrender the city to the U.S. Army to spare it from further destruction. Mattenklot himself surrendered to the Allies weeks later. During his captivity, Mattenklot authored several historical manuscripts for the U.S. Army, including a report on the Battle of Kursk. In the post-war era, he managed to evade prosecution and conviction for his involvement in war crimes. As a subordinate of General Hans von Salmuth, he testified in the High Command trial in 1948 as a defense witness for his former superior. His signature was found on an order dated November 28, 1941, concerning anti-partisan warfare in occupied territories, which included directives for the establishment of concentration camps and the execution of civilians suspected of aiding partisans. During his interrogation on May 19, 1947, Mattenklot claimed that such measures were necessary and justified, asserting they were deterrents rather than routinely implemented. He denied knowledge of systematic killings of Jews, communists, and other undesirable elements in the East, emphasizing he knew absolutely nothing about the Holocaust. However, subsequent evidence revealed his awareness of Nazi policies and collaboration with perpetrators of atrocities. Another potential avenue for Mattenklot's prosecution arose regarding the execution of Mayor Grafer in Lemgo. Paul Gorbig, involved in Grafer's trial, alleged Mattenklot's awareness of the situation and attempted to shift blame onto others. However, legal proceedings progressed slowly, and by 1959, all efforts ceased, with Mattenklot already deceased. Mattenklot spent his final years in Braunlage, a health resort in the Harz Mountains, where he passed away on June 28, 1954, at the age of 69. Decorations and Awards Knight's Cross of the Friedrich Order, First Class with Swords 
Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on November 23, 1941, as General der Infanterie and Commander of the 72nd Infantry Division. German Cross in Gold on September 19, 1942, as General der Infanterie and Commanding General of the 42 Army Corps. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.